it's practically a law of physics that the Earth will be destroyed. So it's a given that we have to leave the Earth. Today we are very lucky to be joined by Michi Okaku, the co-founder of Stringfield Theory, the best-selling author, TV and radio host. Welcome Michio. Glad to be on the show. Now I've just taken a read of your book, The Future of Humanity, and I get the sense that you're quite the optimist. But with the likes of climate change, overpopulation, and increased questioning of scientific truths, why should we stay optimistic? Well, look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. The dinosaurs did not have a space program. And that's why they're not here today. Yes. How come they're not dinosaurs in this room? Because they got wiped out. They didn't know what hit them. So when we think about climate change, we think about nuclear proliferation, overpopulation, yeah, they're all problems that we Earthlings have to solve. Mm -hmm. But we have to always keep in our mind that we need an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. We need plan B. We need to have an option of creating perhaps a new branch of humanity in outer space. And, and prices are dropping to the point where it's becoming economical to go back to the moon. In fact, next year, we mm -hmm. go back to the moon. After 50 years, NASA is sending an unmanned space probe around the moon, first time in 50 years, and after that, on to Mars. But a common argument is, we have a lot of problems here on Earth. Why would we aim to be a multi-planetary species when we've got issues to solve here? Well, see, no one's talking about moving the population of the Earth to Mars. That's, mm -hmm. it. That's too much. However, we are talking about a settlement, a self-sufficient settlement that costs no extra money. They would raise their own crops, they would mine the soil, they would begin the process of terraforming the atmosphere of Mars, and at no extra cost to Earthlings, we could then have another settlement on, on Mars. And that would be great because we need Plan B, an insurance policy, because asteroids do hit the Earth every once in a while. Uh, we have ice ages, we have super volcanoes, Right in the heart of America, we have the Yellowstone volcano, super volcano, that if it erupted, would rip the guts out of the United States of America. And so we need a backup plan, not to replace all the problems of the Earth, but plan B, basically. Now, the late Stephen Hawking, he's famous for saying, uh, in the next 200 years, it's essential for humanity to develop the technology to become multiplanetary. But when you look at uh, the short term, so the next 20 years, what do you see the future of space travel to look like? Well, first of all, I think uh, the late Stephen Hawking was right. It's practically a law of physics that the Earth will be destroyed. Yeah. Uh, billions of years from now, the sun will expand, eat up the Earth. On a scale of tens of millions of years, another killer asteroid could hit us from outer space. On a scale of tens of thousands of years, a super volcano could rip the guts out of the planet Earth. So it's a given as Stephen Hawking has said, that we have to leave the Earth. Now, in a 20-year time frame, on the other hand, first we want to go back to the moon. Already, NASA has the SLS booster rocket. We're going to have a traffic jam around the moon. And speaking of space, you've made the bold prediction that in the next century, we will make contact with an alien civilization. Do you still stand by that prediction? I certainly do. In fact, many people call me on the radio and say that they know the aliens are out there because they've been kidnapped and they've been on the flying saucer. I tell them, the next time you're kidnapped by a flying saucer, for God's sake, steal something. <laughs> an alien paperweight, an alien chip, anything, because there's no law against stealing from an extraterrestrial civilization. No law whatsoever. And you need proof. You got to have proof or else who's going to believe you? So I think that, yeah, I think in this century we will make contact with an extraterrestrial civilization because we're already eavesdropping, eavesdropping on hundreds of stars in outer space. And maybe one of these days we'll hit the jackpot. Now, Elon Musk, he compares artificial intelligence with the danger of nuclear war. Do you have those same concerns? Yes, but see, on a time frame of many, many decades, I think artificial intelligence in the short term, for decades to come, will mm -hmm. generate jobs, prosperity, whole new industries mm -hmm. are going to open up around artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. But let's not be naive. By the end of the century, we could have robots as smart as a monkey. Now, monkeys are self-aware. They know mm -hmm. they're not humans. They have a different agenda. So when our robots become as smart as a monkey, we should put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they have murderous thoughts.
And here in New Zealand over the last few months we've had the likes of Attenborough, Jane Goodall, Neil deGrasse Tyson speaking to huge audiences here in New Zealand, um, especially popular with children. Now if you are a Kiwi kid that's interested in science, what particular field do you think they should be taking a second look at? Well I think there's going to be an explosion, first of all in space travel. We're entering the second golden era of space travel. Now the first era was great, we went to the moon, but it cost too much money. Mm -hmm. It consumed 5% of the U.S. federal budget. Think about that. 5% of every dollar you paid to the government went to the Apollo space program. Unsustainable. Now prices are dropping. You know the movie The Martian with Matt Damon? Yes, I That cost $100 million. But the, the Indians sent a probe to Mars for $70 million. <laughs> a Hollywood movie about going to Mars cost more than actually going to Mars. So that's how cheap space travel has become. And Silicon Valley billionaires are just pumping in billions of dollars of their own money because they see riches, they see fame, glory, and a pot of gold there. So do you think it's important then for private enterprise, the likes of Rocket Lab here in New Zealand, SpaceX, to be sort of taking the reins from NASA and doing it themselves, or do you think it should be kept within governments? NASA has been criticized as being the agency to nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's great. It does a lot of work sending satellites and orbiters and stuff like that, but it doesn't explore new realms. And that's why it got stuck. It got stagnated. And this is where we have new blood coming in from SpaceX, from, from Amazon, and from uh, Virgin Galactic. They're saying, we're going to take the reins and push it forward. We're not going to wait. We're not going to wait for Washington bureaucrats to make a decision on the next, uh, next go around on the planet Earth. We've been there. We've done that. Mm -hmm. We want to go where no one's gone before. And that's why I think there's new energy. So for young people, that's your question. I think there's going to be a whole new golden age of space exploration. We're going to go back to the moon. We're going to mine asteroids. We're going to go to Mars and then on to Titan. And for someone like yourself, a theoretical physicist, what is the meaning of life to you? Well, personally, I think that it's too easy for someone to give you from the sky the meaning of life. You got to earn it. You got to struggle. You got to find your own way. It's too easy for someone simply to give you a book and say, This is the meaning of life, folks. So I think that we have to struggle and get self fulfillment. We have to find our own meaning of life.